All right, Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking the game we love each and every day with you as we get you set for 2019. We got Stephen M. Smith from touchdownalabama.com on the line, and we have obviously had Stephen on to talk Alabama positional breakdowns on the offense, the defense, and the special teams. And we're going to have Stephen on to talk SEC, our top five lists, quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers we're going to tackle today. Stephen, how you doing? Doing well, man. Excited for this. Um, great day outside. Braves baseball's alive and well, but that time called football's coming back. Yeah, football's going to be here very soon. I'm sure we're going to see you uh, front and center, very prominent at SEC Media Days here very soon in about three weeks, something in that range. Uh, when we look at SEC quarterbacks, uh, we've seen uh, one of the more prolific ones. Uh, running and passing the football, set a number of records at Mississippi State. Nick Fitzgerald, he has moved on. Jared Stidham, uh, who had a couple of fine seasons at Auburn, almost led them to an SEC uh, championship in Atlanta a couple of years ago against Georgia. And um, Jordan Tamu, who uh, didn't have the best of defenses to compliment him, but uh, lit up the scoreboard a number of times at Ole Miss in relief of Shea Patterson. Jalen Hurts, of course, uh, a national champion and uh, a prolific passer runner uh, moving on to Oklahoma from the Alabama Crimson Tide. So let's, uh, Stephen, let's see uh, your top five list uh, at, of SEC quarterbacks and see what you got here. Well, starting this off at number five, Mark, I got Felipe Franks of Florida. He made a tremendous jump uh, this past season, really started to grow into his own, uh, throwing the football. Dan Mullen, an offensive mind, a guy, an offensive guru, really. I uh, took him under his wing and taught him some things. We, we always do believe they was a big time athlete at six foot six. But this past season, we started to watch him grow as a, as a quarterback, managing the situation, putting guys in the right spot to be successful. Had a good touchdown to interception ratio a season ago of 24 to six. And with the weapons he's got around him, both at running back and wide receiver, really like about Felipe Blanks moving forward, so he would be my number five guy. At number four, you're going with uh, Joe Burrow from LSU, a guy that the Tigers got from Ohio State as a transfer, and he stabilized things quite a bit for an Ogeron bunch that you're trying to get a firm grip on. Will Coach O be able to truly delegate the roles to different coaches on his staff that they need to have. But in terms of Bur in terms of Burrow, uh, solid 16 touchdowns last year, only five interceptions, took great care of the football. He's been doing some talking this all season, Mark, stating how LSU is going to score some points. They're going to be a big, big offensive-minded team in the upcoming season. Of course, the Tigers did not get on the scoreboard against Alabama in 2018, taking that 29 nothing lost there in Baton Rouge, but Joe Burrow promising some points there to the LSU faithful. He's number four. At number three, give me Kevin Mon of Texas A&M. Uh, Jimbo Fisher's got his quarterback. Young, athletic, improving with the arm talent. We always know A&M keeps a stacked deck of wide receivers, but much like Felipe Franks, I saw a big jump taken by Kellen Mond uh, this past year. 24 touchdown passes, nine interceptions, continuing to grow. Uh, the former five star, so he's number three. Number two, Jake Fromm of Georgia. And this is someone who had picture perfect postseason matchup against Alabama. Whether it was the 2018 national title game off the 17th season or the 2018 Southeastern Conference title game. Jake Brown was dropping dime. He was putting passes in the right spot. He was orchestrating the group. And due to just some of coaching errors from Kirby Smart in both of those games, of course, the defense not being prepared for the backup quarterback in both of those matchups, it canceled out Jake Brown's style of play. So he did an incredible job. Uh, Jake Brown, number two, the returning junior is back. The number one that leaves Alabama, Alabama's Tua Tonga Bangola, a 3,000 yard passer a season ago, Heisman Trophy finalist, consensus All American, broke a number of 
school records for the Crimson Tide. Uh, the biggest thing for Tua, can the physical body hold? He's starting to get a mix of injuries, a growing mix. Uh, last season, he had the hand injury in the spring, and it went from the hand to the knee to the ankle, and he w- did not participate in the Manning Pass Academy over this weekend due to a hamstring issue. So can the young man hold up physically? That's the biggest question. But my 5-1, to one, uh, Felipe Franks of Florida, Joe Burrow of LSU at 4, Kevin Mond for Texas and him at 3, Jake Frum of Georgia at 2, and number 1, Tua Tagovailoa. Of course, uh, once Tua pulled off the comeback uh, in the previous year's national championship game in relief of Jalen Hurts coming back from 13 nothing with a couple of touchdown passes late and the beautiful throw to Devonta Smith, to win the national championship and then going into the 2018 season in which he was able to just uh, be off the charts prolific. Most of the time, Alabama was leading 28 nothing in the first quarter against really good opponents, and Tua was just magnificent, and there was really nothing to knock uh, un- until – Uh, He had some bumps and bruises both physically and in the passing game against Georgia. Now, considering his performance against Clemson, which was uh, close to scintillating in aside from the pick six in the first quarter. And then just like the rest of the team, not so much the final three quarters. In addition to the injuries, do you think uh, the decline in play had to do with anything else in regards to maybe some opponents catching up with Tua down the stretch last year? I think one of the biggest issues with Tua was he, he's got that Superman complex, Mark, to where he wants to make he wants to make the big play every single time, and if he doesn't make the big play, then mentally he feels like he's let the team down. And he's had that issue in high school. He's had that issue when he, Trent Dilfer was working with him in the Elite Eleven competition. Uh, the next stage of Tonga Bangola's development. It's understanding if the big play is not there, it's fine. Check the ball down. Alabama will take a four, five, or six-yard gain. It's about moving the chain, uh, keeping yourself in a, in a good down and distance, maneuvering the football. If the big play is there, hey, Nick State will take it. But if the big play is not there, don't allow yourself to get into anxiety and try to make the big play. But all you need to do is make the correct play. We got Stephen M. Smith on the line from touchdownalabama.com, ranking his top five quarterbacks in the SEC. Uh, he's got uh, two at number one, Jake Fromm at number two. Fromm probably um, criticized at times as being a game manager, and I don't know that he necessarily is. I think that's the the situation he's in in regards to having such a strong running game and Kirby Smart coming from the mold of a a Nick Saban-style offense where it's a pro-style offense, the running game, the running back position is going to take hold and be featured first and foremost. There's going to be a lot of play action off of that. Uh, The defense is extremely talented, probably didn't play up to its potential last year, but Jake Fromm not always called upon to put up huge numbers, but when you look at NFL draft prospectus, uh, Stephen, we see that uh, the the next level is uh, pretty highly regarding uh, Jake Fromm as more than a game manager. He's probably going to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. Jake Fromm has the ability more to make all the throws. And and once again, I saw him twice uh, against the Crimson Tide and his ability to carve up of an Alabama defense, putting passes on time on target and stride and very, very accurate with the football and very confident uh, as far as back shoulder throws, post patterns, deep routes. He's got the arm talent, the instincts, the IQ to put the ball exactly where he wants it and getting his guys a chance to make those big con plays at wide receiver. So uh, to me, Jake Fromm, all the throws on that field. And we saw the best of Kellen Mond, at least in a big situation in the second half of that game against Clemson when the Tigers came to Kyle Field, took a 17-3 to lead. Mond brought the A&M Aggies back, uh, threw for 430 yards, three touchdowns against that vaunted defense, no interceptions, came within a two-point play of taking the, the game to overtime, actually had an 85-yard drive the series before in which they fumbled at the goal line, almost pulled off the big upset. So on occasion, Kellen Mann, when he puts it all together with the run pass uh, dual threat ability that he has, certainly 
Uh, he is a threat, ran for almost 500 yards and seven touchdowns. Uh, you mentioned Felipe Franks. I, I talked to a lot of Miami fans on this channel uh, who are licking their chops uh, with the thoughts of uh, Felipe Franks, and they're thinking 2017 Felipe Franks. He's become a capable quarterback, which shouldn't be a surprise considering Dan Mullen's uh, background and his ability to mold and develop quarterbacks. And Felipe Franks is more than capable last year. Uh, just a few guys that we didn't mention in regards to, uh, I did want to hit on Joe Burrow. I think people need to consider, like from the style of the LSU offense is, is not going to allow Burrow to throw for prolific numbers, but if he's able to do it when they need it, like they did at the Peach Bowl against UCF when UCF put up points and Burrow countered with 40 of his own, 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, so he was able to do it on that stage. Uh, and also have to consider, at this time last year, the kid wasn't even on campus. He stepped on campus the first week of August, had to get acclimated to his surroundings, classes, teammates, terminology, offense, coaches, offensive system, the whole deal was thrown at Joe Burrow at the last minute. He uh, acclimated himself rather well, uh, had to face a big opponent in Miami in week one and led LSU to its first top 10 finish in a, a few years. Uh, so Burrow versus Bama in Tuscaloosa is going to be interesting, of course, this year. Kelly Bryant enters the SEC going from Clemson to Missouri. We know his limitations in the passing game, but he's much experienced. He's won big games. Uh, he knows what he's doing. He's very mobile. Uh, Jake Bentley, uh, his swan song at South Carolina. Steven, of course, he's had 32 career starts. He's had an up and down career. Uh, South Carolina took a bit of a, a step back after a 9-4 and four 2017. Uh, Jared Grantano at Tennessee. He's been roughed up due to a poor offensive line, but he's got 21 career games under his belt. Only threw three interceptions last year, led a, a, an anemic offense. But again, if he gets a little bit more help around him, uh, he, he protected the football last year. Uh, Keaton Thompson's an interesting prospect at Mississippi State, considering that uh, two years ago, uh, he took over at the uh, at the Egg Bowl when Nick Fitzgerald went down with that horrific injury, uh, led Mississippi State to a bowl win. So he's got some decent experience under his belt. I know Ole Miss fans are counting on Matt Corral to be a big time player uh, coming into the fold. Auburn, one of the best teams in the league, and they don't know exactly who's going to be their quarterback right now. Most, most people would say Joey Gatewood. Bo Nix is is in line as well, and people forget about uh, Terry Wilson. I know that he has his issues throwing the ball downfield. I think uh, most people would lose a bet in guessing that he completed 67% of his passes, most of it underneath. But, you know, he won 10 games, finished in the top 10 uh, to complement a Kentucky defense and running game with Benny Snell that was one of the best in the nation. So he's probably going to be expected to do more in the pass game. Ben Hicks comes from Tulsa to Arkansas, most likely going to be the starter there. And Riley Neal at Vanderbilt. Uh, any thoughts about the, the, the best of the rest, Stephen? I mean, it, it, it's going to be an interesting year, you know, Mark, for, uh, for, for all the quarterbacks returning. One of the guys I'm looking forward to seeing and the guys that we've mentioned would be uh, for Arkansas getting Nick Starkle from the transfer portal from Texas A&M and how Chad Morris is going to be able to use Nick Starkle within this offense. They've got two very good running backs who are team board and Jeff Wawaley. But how is Nick Starkle going to be used? So he's one that I'm definitely going to watch. Another situation with quarterbacks I'm looking forward to seeing is the likes of, as you mentioned, Jake Bentley. Can he finally put together a year where he's not so erratic throwing the football? He's got an arm. He's got a lot of confidence. He's got some weapons around him. One in particular, Sean Smith, the wide receiver. But will this finally be the year that Jake Bentley becomes that full, full package in terms of arm strength, arm talent, anticipation, IQ, and the leadership in you know, keeping my guys under our head coach, Will Muschamp, in position again? So the likes of Nick Stark and Jake Bentley, two of them, that I'll be watching this season. All right, Stephen M. Smith of touchdownalabama.com. Of course, you join him right there for the finest in Alabama football coverage as he prepares for SEC Media Days coming up very soon and uh, the beginning of Alabama football practice. He's given us a look at SEC quarterbacks. Uh, Stephen, we will see you soon. Thank you so much, Mark.